Um, so I'll just introduce myself. Uh, my name's Andrew. I'm the head of marketing for Micro OSI, and I'm going to just introduce the, uh, the 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 session for for today. The the main um, the sort of the main part of the of the session is going to be a demonstration actually of the activation of service assurance inside of an OSM environment and how that uh, synchronizes across OpenStack and uh, other uh, and, and some of the Micro OSI performance management products that um, that are involved in the process. It's something we've been working on for quite a while, um, and uh, I'll go straight into it actually. Uh, uh, sorry, my slide isn't moving. Hold on a second. There we go. So, for those of you who don't know MicroMosi, we provide uh, service assurance for Tier One telcos. We've been in the business for about 25 years. Um, we've now built a cloud native, or uh, we, we've re-architected our, our application suite to be to be cloud native. So, we sit on a on, on a Red Hat um, driven cloud platform. And we provide our applications on any kind of surface, of course, uh, thanks to Red Hat, but, but also um, through a strategic agreement with AWS, we provide it in the public cloud. And we have a number of customers that are effectively, um, uh, whose who's commercial agreement with us is, is, is a software as a service kind of commercial um, agreement. So we provide uh, performance fault management, service quality management, and then wrapped around that, we provide uh, automation and uh, analytics. In the analytics side of things, we are starting to introduce AI and machine learning in some very, very precise use cases. Um, we are at the moment really on the drawing uh, on, the, on the drawing board stage there, but we're seeing some promising results in terms of uh, using AI and machine learning to predict uh, events um, primarily based on uh, some pattern of preceding uh, things that happen inside of the network. So, so that's uh, that's all wrapped around in a suite called Experience Assurance and Analytics. That's our, our suite of applications. The version that runs on the public cloud is called the Assurance Cloud. Uh, so that's just a summary of uh, what we do. So let's move on to the next slide. The um, the our mission statement really is to is actually to deliver the autonomic network, and I know the previous speaker was was, was mentioning um, autonomic systems. Um, whether that's a coincidence or not, I'm not sure because I joined the company about two years ago, and we and uh, and we had the autonomic autonomic network concept there already. So it's promising to see that um, that uh, other major players in the industry are also talking along those lines. So, in terms of uh, how that how that's evolving the end goal is uh, is is zero touch management and the the the, the aspect that we're going to demonstrate today is the zero touch discovery of a service once it's uh, instantiated inside of OSM and the zero touch activation of service assurance for that service without any manual intervention required there's a really strong economic business case for why that's a really important aspect uh, as we move into the 5G era. I'll move on to the next slide. And the business case is, is, is clear because what we're expecting to see as uh, telcos move into NFV is a much more frequent uh, up update, uh, up update frequency of services <clears throat> Excuse me, and network functions, and also uh, a much more frequent uh, uh, launch cadence of services in, in the networks, and, and these are going to be much more diverse as well, serving a whole a whole different kind of class of, of customers within enterprise and consumer and public sector and all manner of things. In terms of VNF versioning, we're expecting there to be in the hundreds of iterations of VNF versions um, from VNF vendors. And we've seen that with, uh, with the leading CSP that we work with today. Uh, this is, these, are, these are real numbers from, a, from one of our customers. So, so without um, the, the elimination of, of, of a lot of manual activity in terms of designing 
assurance adapters uh, for uh, services in networks, you really can't support or enable this kind of uh, this kind of future. So ultimately, the bottom line for us is that uh, you, le leveraging uh, platforms like OSM is going to unlock significant time to market capex and opex savings which almost by definition is 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 essential if we're going to leverage and monetize uh 5g to its fullest extent and let's move on to the next slide where i think i'm going to hand over to ali who's our product uh, expert um who's covering this uh, this uh, this osm integration for us hopefully we can hear ali now yes i'll drop Hello. i've got Hi Ali, I'll drive the slides while you speak. So just let me know when you want to move on, and uh, and I'll and I'll I'll move to the next slide. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Andrew. So hi everybody. So my name is uh, Ali Belosin. I work uh, as the product manager at Macom OSI, and I'm in charge of uh, all the integration with OSM and uh, how we can integrate and add this functionality within uh, uh, Macom OSI service assurance and uh, and offering. Um, before, uh, so today we'll do a demonstration of this uh, zero touch service assurance and dynamic service assurance uh, based on OSM. Before we go to this, I would like to remind everybody maybe on the classic uh, adapter architecture. Uh, as Andrew mentioned, we are in the business since 25 years, so we know about service assurance and we've been working with customers uh, with different vendors and typically uh, until now uh, when we needed to provide some monitoring on a given uh, technology or a given vendor uh, all the majority of the, uh, of the competition or everybody is following the same kind of uh, development meaning do you need to go with the specification of the vendor you need to check all the, the different models you need to check what uh, metrics and metadata will be available and therefore you start your development and you need to develop what we call in my commerce an adapter that will be able to retrieve the data that could be csv it could be snmp it could be uh, all types of, uh, of telemetry and then you have this adapter ready and you can start the monitoring and have all the information within your dashboards uh, and reporting. So this is the very classic and I would say old fashioned way of uh, service sessions. Next, uh, Andrew, please. However, with the, the uh, OSM and I would say virtualized environment and orchestration, this kind of classic um, model is not matching this dynamicity anymore meaning that uh, you can have as andrew mentioned new vnf descriptors or definitions being updated constantly depending on customer needs or, or new updates for the vendors you have also new vnfs being started on the network environment on the customer environment on demand to match uh, a network service uh, burst or any need that will come from uh, end users and therefore, this uh, classic development of adapters that can take weeks to have something ready and uh, installed on a production environment was not ma matching anymore. Therefore, what we introduced here and what we'd like to demonstrate today is uh, with our integration with ASM and taking one of the uh, main capability of OSM to expose the the uh, the descriptors and especially the uh, the uh, as the assurance part of the descriptors which is the monitoring parameters we are able to retrieve this information dynamically as soon as this information is available in osm meaning as soon as a new uh, vnf package or network service package is onboarded in osm with constant integration with that we uh, developed directly with osm and therefore once we detect this information being available we automatically onboard the catalog detect this uh, 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 service assurance metadata information and activate the uh, the assurance as soon as the network service is associated so two levels the onboarded of the catalog and detection of all this metadata around counters information 
and once this network service is activated, we detect the new instantiation of the uh, of the uh, of the network service, and we also uh, dynamically create the related elements and the network instances in our system. And with the zero touch activation, then in the, the the assurance is activated from two levels: metadata counter definitions and also from uh, an inventory point of view. What is very important here is that not only that we detect the information at the VNF level uh, with the monitoring params and the descriptors that are defined and embodied in OSM, but with our inherent capability of uh, MicroMSI, we are able to therefore propose a uh, an assurance at the network service level. We are able to collect the information of the different VNFs composing a network service and therefore being able to provide uh, a monitoring at the network service level, being able to provide information and uh, quality of service that uh, our customers would like to, uh, to require. So today, and we're going to switch now to the demo, what we'll be uh, showing, it's a uh, very... Uh, so yeah, before we start the demo, so today what we'll be uh, demonstrating is uh, the uh, dynamic detection of uh, new uh, contest metadata once uh, onboarded in OSM and the, uh, the dynamic activation of the assurance. To do so, we use the very uh, simple network service and VNF this, uh, description, which is the Cirrus, which is well known within the OSM community. Uh, we use it just uh, in the lab to uh, to simplify, but all that we've been developed, developed, of course, will be available and uh, possible with more complex uh, network services and VNF uh, descriptors. So let's start. Okay, so what we have here is an OSM uh, uh, UI. So we have zero network service uh, packages and VNF uh, packages. No instances, of course, uh, de defined. We have a constant integration and monitoring with this OSM with uh, towards our uh, Macom OSI EA environment. So this is a constant integration, monitoring the Kafka topics and and uh, therefore being able to detect as soon as any changes will be done. So here is just to confirm that nothing is created at the OSM level. After this, we will see uh, the uh, equivalent in Macam OSM uh, desktop client, which is our client. This is the network element panel and here the calculation panel where we have all the different counters and uh, uh, of different vendors of technology. We have one specific for OSM showing nothing because obviously in OSM, no network uh, service package or VNF package has been uh, developed. We developed off the shelf content like KPIs, high level metric around the VDU uh, CPU utilization that is invalid in currently in Macam OSI because no counters have been onboarded and detected. So now let's go back to OSM and uh, drag and drop new packages. We'll start with the uh, VNF package. So keep in mind, it's a constant monitoring, monitor, uh, listening the Kafka topics. So as soon as new packages are in OSM, and exposed in the Kafka topic, we detect it and will uh, onboard it and in, uh, in uh, our system. So it's a very basic Cirrus VNF. The more important part is the monitoring param that we updated to add a very sp specific and simple counter on the CPU utilization coming directly from the NVI. Again, quickly, it's a very uh, simple VNF with one co connection point. Same thing at the uh, network service. Very simple serverless network service composed by two VNFs with each uh, one connection point 
and uh, linked uh, together with the uh, virtual link. So now that uh, these the packages have been in your SM, they, should, uh, they have been detected by uh, Macom OSI uh, through our product called UNIT. And we have uh, an interface that is able to visualize any network service that will have been detected and onboarded. And this is coming directly coming from the uh, unit database showing that indeed we have detected the addition of the new Cirrus network service uh, based on the Tosca templates. And we have the same graph or modelization that we have in OSM. So two VNFs with two connection points linked by a virtual link. So it means that it's already detected and onboarded in Macom OSI. Let's now open the desktop client, a new desktop client to connect with the refresh metadata. So the metadata in Macom OSI will have been updated, but so we need to open a new client to uh, have this, uh, this uh, refreshed, but we'll keep the previous one just to show you uh, the difference and what already have, have happened since we onboarded the new packages. On the left, you have the previous uh, desk client that uh, I showed you before with nothing in it. In the meantime, let me show you, this is a web interface and we developed high level of the chef content dashboards as we call them. That's a, a group of reports that is showing a high level overview of a network service monitoring showing here that no instances of network service of VNF exist. We have some real-time reports around the health index, and I will explain the health index KPI later on. This is a high level of the chef dashboard. Now, if we go back to the desktop client, so back on the left, that was before, I do the same thing with since we updated and onboarded the new packages. And we can see that the new counter automatically has been auto-discovered and added to the, our calculation palette and automatically uh, discovered. Same thing if we go back to the high level of the chef KPI or metric that was invalid before, VDU CPU utilization. Now if we open it to the same thing, automatically this formula, which uh, well, will have been automatically updated using some uh, uh, machine learning and AI, detecting that we are a CPU utilization counter and therefore this high level KPI should have been updated and is now valid. Let's now go back to OSM and instantiate these network services. So the embodied from a metadata point of view has been done. So now we'll instantiate it and we'll uh, uh, see how the inventory uh, will be ingested. We select the right uh, VM and we create it. It will take a few minutes for the new network service to be ready. That will be, I will explain here some very important information around some key use cases that have been requested by a lot of, uh, of our customers around the correlation between the uh, VNFs and the related NAVI or VM level. So we have now two VNFs uh, being instantiated in OSM level. Very important is that all these instance details, this information that I exposed on the uh, related Kafka topics, we automatically detect it and we automatically ingest it. All this information, all these attributes are information that we, as soon as they are available on the topics, we ingest them. If we check at the open stack level, we should see now, the, of course, the two virtual machines uh, belonging to the two VNFs being starting on the construction. Sometimes open stack is a bit uh, slower to refresh, as okay. So two new virtual machines that are still under construction. So let's wait now at the um, OSM level, okay, we have now the network service been ready. And of, if I go back to the VNF level, let's go take a look at the attributes. We will see some very information around the VDU. And more importantly, this information around the VIM ID, which is the ID 
of the virtual machine. And this is a very important information that we retrieve because we use this information exposed uh, greatly by OSM to enable some key use case around the correlation between the VNF and the virtual machine that uh, is uh, hosting this VNF. We are able, we monitor a lot of different uh, domains and we're able, we have an integration with different uh, VIMs, OpenStack being one of them, and we can monitor OpenStack's uh, infrastructure uh, directly by ingesting all types of information. We support streaming telemetry, Kafka information, CSV, flat files, etc. And with this information on the VIM ID, we are able to correlate the monitoring of the VIM and the monitoring of the VNF, meaning that we are able to see if some uh, degradation at the VIM or NFVI level will be impacting the uh, the uh, VNF behavior and therefore the network service that are uh, uh, that are part of the uh, of the these VNFs. Now that network service has been uh, ready and uh, instituted, let's go back to uh, MicroMSI and open a new client to just again to refresh. Uh, the uh, the metadata and see how this uh, instantiation of the network service has been detected automatically uh, by MicroMSI and how uh, the uh, instances have been created. So on the left, that was the previous one with the only the counter definition being ready, and on the right, we have a new uh, client been opening. A new, uh, the big difference we can see is that at the network element level, we have a new folder or called NFV that has been automatically uh, created and new folders belonging to the network service that are just instantiated and the VNFs elements that have been detected and automatically created in our system. As you can see, the demo uh, network service and the two VNFs composing the network service. We also have the VDUs, which are the virtual machines come, uh, detected by uh, uh, our monitoring of OpenStack, the connection points, and the virtual links. We have here two folders called virtual NS and virtual VNF. These are uh, being created automatically to enable the off the shelf content and the creation of high level content and, and dashboards uh, that I presented before that I will now go back and refresh. So this dashboard is a high level network service dashboard that was empty before. Now, as you can see, because of the detection of the new inventory, the VNF instances have automatically been added. Same thing at the network service. And this dashboard is ready and available to receive some data. Of course, we are at, uh, now at five minutes data granularity, and therefore we are not yet receiving data. We can use some inherent uh, MacAmoy service uh, capability to drill down and use suggested workflows to go to the uh, Vim overview and Vim monitoring around the CPU utilization. It's empty, uh, still empty because we haven't received the data yet. But as soon as the data will be coming and ingested, this report will be automatically be updated. So let's just uh, wait a couple of minutes for the data to come in. Usually it's uh, as soon as the data is available. So as you can see, a couple of minutes after we have the data available at the Vim overview dashboards. So this is the data coming directly from the OpenStack that we are able to have a link at the network service level. So the information around the network health index is based on CPU utilization. The CPU utilization not exceeding a, high, a given threshold. Therefore, we, de we developed some uh, health index around 100%. Uh, meaning that uh, the CPU utilization is below what we consider to be uh, incorrect. However, it's already uh, working. We have the data being uh, flowing to this dashboard. For the real-time dashboards uh, and, uh, and uh, reports here, of course, we need to wait for a couple of minutes more to have more plots and be able. After like five or 10 minutes, when the five minutes are arriving, 
the real-time or near-real-time reports are automatically being updated with the health index information and the uh, PNF or VDU CPU utilization that we have here and come in directly. So the activation is done. The service the report is being uh, started automatically. What we had to do is just onboard the packages, start the network service, and as soon as the new counters have been detected, all the data have been going through our mediation and updating this high-level predefined content automatically. And uh, this is the end of, uh, of the demo. Thank you very much, Sally. Um, and that actually concludes our session. If anyone has any questions, we'd be happy to answer. Yeah, this is, this is Peter. Can you hear me? But I think uh, uh, maybe not. Peter, go ahead and ask your question. Okay. I think we have yeah. time for one question. Great. Hi, hi. Yes, yeah, so uh, Ali, where does the network service health index formula that calculates it, where's that come from? So uh, so this one has been uh, developed, so we have a uh, good experience in uh, this test index uh, notion is pretty common in, uh, in, uh, on the, well, within our customers. Is uh, We have this, the same thing on the IP networks. So basically this was predefined content that we developed that will use CPU utilization, it could be memory, and therefore this health index, for instance, what we did is a mathematical formula that would say if my CPU utilization of the VNFs composing my network service is exceeding this threshold, then my health index will be impacting and will be below 50% or etc. So with some weight. So this is a predefined content that was previously before uh, importing anything in OSM was defined. Usually we define it and with our customers. Uh, this kind of definitions can be different one from one customer to another one. Some people uh, will uh, put some weight, more weight on CPU, more weight on the network uh, uh, utilization or this kind of thing. Yeah, so so the, one of the issues we find is that you don't necessarily know that formula in advance. Yeah, indeed. So it has and to this, be refined through experience, yeah. Yes, but with, this is uh, what I will be showing, is that my uh, predefined metric of KPI that was invalid at the beginning detected automatically that the new type of metadata counter was around CPU utilization with some uh, machine learning and detected that the, therefore my, the metric that should be updated is the, my video CPU utilization. So this is something that we already put in place. Of okay. course, depending with the uh, customer needs that uh, we can update and this is all this kind of thing that we do in advance with uh, uh, discussions with our customers.